Nick's Where's Nick's degree? strength and power? When are they gonna put this on the channel? <laughs> they gotta clip this, they gotta say, yo, Breon's already talking shit. Breon said, yo, f his f him. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, I didn't say it, Breon said it. All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today, so let's get straight into it here. And we have got some really good ones today, so give this video a thumbs up. Now, the first story that I have for you guys today, Larry Wheels bending a frying pan on his Instagram page, doing the classic old-school strongman feat of strength. But what caught my attention was the caption and the top comment on this post. The caption being, first time trying to bend a pan, how quickly can you bend it? And the top comment, his girlfriend, depends what position you have me in. Now the next story that I have for you guys today, you guys already know it has to be a curl story. It's related to Larry Wheels because it is a curl story. So this powerlifter, I saw this on Powerlifting Legends Instagram page. He weighs 200 pounds and he's seated curled 110 kgs. 242 pounds, 42 pounds heavier than his body weight, which is extremely impressive. And also this relates to the video that I posted earlier today, um, the little biography video that I did on Levin Saganashvi, because in the second video here, this guy is arm wrestling Levin Saganashvi and giving him a run for his money for sure. Despite the fact that Levin weighs nearly twice what this power lifter weighs. So I thought that was a pretty impressive curl and I had to include it in this video, but wait until you guys see the curl that I'm gonna show you guys at the end of this video. It's Big Rami and it's an NSP exclusive. Now, next up in the news, Dexter Jackson calls me out. I had a couple people send me screenshots of this comment thread on Dexter Jackson's Instagram page uh, because honestly, I am blocked from Dexter's Instagram. I have been for years now and I don't really know why. I've never had beef with Dexter. But essentially the theme of this comment thread is claiming that I count Dexter out in my Olympia predictions. He goes on to say, Dexter says, who are you talking about? None of the top YouTubers ever competed. Then he goes on to say, Nick's, the other guy says, Nick Strength and Power, he always counts you out. And then Dexter says, he's the worst one of them all. You just said it. If he's always wrong and he counts me out, why do you even follow him? And then this guy replies and says, he's just one of the reporters that gives you a hard time. It makes me angry that he always counts you out of the top five, blah, blah, blah. To be honest with you guys, none of this is even true. If you guys watch my recent videos, my recent Olympia predictions for 2020, I have Dexter in the top five. I predicted that Dexter could possibly win the show. I also say every time Dexter's name comes up, that he's arguably the greatest bodybuilder of all time because he is the winningest. He's won more titles than anybody else. I always keep it very positive when I'm talking about Dexter Jackson. And I recently did a video talking about the fact that this could be the greatest Olympia lineup of all time because there's so many past Olympia champions. Phil Heath, Dexter Jackson, Brandon Curry, Flex Lewis, and I include Dexter Jackson in that. And I say he's a top threat to the title this year and every year because Dexter has a tendency to catch guys on conditioning. That's why his nickname is The Blade, because he comes in sharp. So if all these guys were to come in off and Dexter came in sharp and conditioned, Dexter could win the 2020 Mr. Olympia. I'll say it right here. I will say it again. I don't have a problem with Dexter Jackson, but I think the root of the issue in this comment thread here is the fact that Dexter has me blocked. So when I make my news videos and I make my update videos, I don't talk about Dexter because I can't see his page because he has me blocked. God knows why. I really don't care. So I don't talk about his physique updates or his training videos or whatever he posts on his page because I can't see it. And I figured that's what he wanted. That's why he's got me blocked. So I'm not going to have people say that I always count Dexter out because I don't. I literally have him in my top five predictions right now for the 2020 Mr. Olympia. And I'm on record multiple times saying he's the greatest to ever do it. One of the greatest, if not the greatest. And I'm on record as saying he's in my top five this year. So it's just nonsense. I've never been anything but respectful towards Dexter Jackson. And I am in this video too. Like I said, right here, right now, I've got Dexter in the top six again with the possibility of him winning the show. But don't complain about me counting you out or not covering you when you have me blocked. He's had me blocked for like two or three years now, and I've done fine not really talking about him at all. So that is two Mr. Olympias now this month so far have taken the time to call me out, Phil Heath and Dexter Jackson. I guess that means I'm doing something right. 
So if you guys like this channel and support me and like the commentary and like the fact that a bodybuilding fan, even though I did compete, I don't consider myself a bodybuilder, I consider myself a bodybuilding fan. If you guys like the fact that a bodybuilding fan can give commentary on the internet, make sure you show some support, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I've been nothing but positive and respectful to these guys. And I think most of you guys that actually watch my videos know that. Now, next up in the news, this one is an interesting one. So, Breon Ainsley recently posted this video on his YouTube channel. Um, he is talking to Brad, Bradley Martin, not Bradley Dingleberry. He's talking to Brad, and they're talking about his Olympia placing last year, and he brings up essentially Chris Bumstead. He, he basically takes a shot at Chris Bumstead, and he says in his little clip here, and I'll roll it for you guys in a second, he says that a Mr. Olympia champion should not have any lagging body parts because um, Bradley is saying that Bumstead has some lagging body parts and Breon's response essentially is that the Mr. Olympia champion should not have any lagging body parts. I'll roll that clip for you guys here. And the reason why I wanted to address this in a video is because they specifically address me in their video and say, why has Nick Strength and Power not covered this? So here's the clip. Win this one. I, I, I think this. <laughs> If you if they I hate to say this if they let because if you come in good enough let I hate the word if you come in good enough like your best and they let you in because there is a little bit of that there then I think you can win all of them yeah you just have to because you have to you have to take down the you know yeah the numbers yeah you know what I'm saying like yeah. and the I, guy's physique is fucking incredible there's no denying that there's points where it's like it's it's lacking a little bit but I know he's bringing it up regardless it's just like. There is a little bit of that who do we want there type vibe, which is, is fine. Of course there is. And that's the same thing for you. Like even on both sides, it's like whether you're there, there's still there's still reasons why they're like why they want you there. Yeah. Other than just your physique. Yeah, yeah but you know? I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go here because this is my damn jam. You do whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Yeah. So there should never be an, a Mr. Olympia that lacks anywhere. You should never call a Mr. Olympia that lacks in body parts anywhere. Every Mr. Olympia should have a complete balanced physique and not lack body parts. I'm gonna go there. I just went there. Yeah, you did it. Don't edit that out. No, he's please don't. Because he's too nice, he'll try and keep it. He'll be like, yeah, baby, no, 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 you're gonna go home later. Like, he's gonna go home later. Like, yeah, baby, yeah, cut that out. So I'm not going to take it out of context for you guys. He said what he said, and basically I think he's talking about Chris Bumstead's arms. I think that's the main weak point that a lot of people call out about Bumstead, specifically his biceps. Um, and another thing they discuss is Brad says if they let you win this year. And I think that's a very interesting point that Brad brings up for a number of reasons. And here's why. He says if they let him win, he thinks that Brianna will continue to win for years and years. But I don't think Breon is ever going to win the Olympia again. And here's why I say that. And before the Breon fans get mad and, and start hating on this video, the reason why I say that is because I think the judging criteria for classic physique is changing rapidly. And the reason why I say that is I believe the judges selected Chris Bumstead as Mr. Olympia because that's the direction that they're going for what they want from a classic physique. And they're going away from the direction of Breon Ainsley. That's why Breon fans and Bumstead fans always butt heads because Breon fans really like his physique and Bumstead fans really like his physique. And they have two very different physiques, but they're both classic in their own way. But I think the judges are going more towards the Chris Bumstead look than the Breon look. And that's okay. But I think that indicator that the judges are moving in that direction it doesn't mean Breon's a bad bodybuilder. It doesn't mean Breon is getting worse, but it means the judges are looking for something else, something more like a Chris Bumstead, a taller, flowing, commanding stage presence where your eyes are just drawn to Bumstead. And I think Brad and uh, Breon talk a little bit about politics there and the fact that, you know, the way they phrased it, if the judges let you win. And I do think there's a tiny bit of bias potentially in the judges, um, at least seeing what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, for example, take the fact that Mr. Olympia is an ambassador of the sport. The winner of the Mr. Olympia is now an ambassador for bodybuilding. Chris Bumstead not only has nearly twice the followers of Breon Ainsley, but Breon Ainsley just is not engaging like Chris Bumstead is. Chris Bumstead, I'll show you guys a perfect example. This is facts right here. Chris Bumstead, a video he posted from five days ago, a quarter million views on that video, 1.2 million followers extremely high level of engagement. Breon Ainsley, I don't, I like the guy. He seems like a really nice guy. He's got a great physique, 
but he's been with like three different supplement companies over the past couple years. And there's a reason for that. He's not very engaging with the fans. Breon Ainsley, a video of his physique, just like Chris Bumstead, five days ago, just like Chris Bumstead, 25,000 views, a tenth of the views and the engagement that Bumstead is getting. Now, I'm not saying this plays a large factor in the judging decision or whatever, but I, I'm saying it would be ignorant to believe that at the very least, it's not in the back of the judges' minds that this exists, that Chris Bumstead is a great ambassador. Chris Bumstead has very engaged fans. Chris Bumstead engages audiences. People want to see him, and that doesn't so much appear to be the case with Breon. So if you talk about politics and bodybuilding, you've got to compare the fact that Chris Bumstead is doing 10 times the numbers and 10 times the engagement that Breon is doing. And as much as people might not want to admit it, these numbers do matter. Social media numbers matter. Bodybuilding at the end of the day is a business. The IFBB is a business. The Mr. Olympia is a business. And I'm not saying that this really plays that big of a role in the judging. But again, I'm saying I think it's at least in the back of the judges' minds the direction that they want this thing to go. And I think it's not that big of a stretch to say people are looking at Bumstead and saying he's like 10 years younger than Breon. He's got a much larger following. People are much more excited about him winning. Maybe this is the direction we need to move because this is what the fans are saying. The fans are saying they like him better. The numbers are saying this is the physique that people like. I think it plays a factor. And that might come off negative towards Breon. I know people always say that I'm a Bumstead fanboy. I just prefer Bumstead's physique. I really think that Breon has a fantastic physique. He comes in great condition. He's got great shape. He's got great abs. He's got great arms. He's got the whole nine. I think he's a great guy. He seems like a really nice dude. But at the end of the day, to call Bumstead out and say, Mr. Olympia shouldn't have lagging body parts, if Mr. Olympia looks better than you on the day of the show and still has lagging body parts, he can still beat you if he looks better than you with those lagging body parts. So if he beat you with a lagging body part, let's be honest, whose fault is that? Is that his fault for winning? Or is it your fault for coming in off and letting him beat you with that lagging body part? I'm not trying to hate. That's just facts. I don't think you can really say Mr. Olympia shouldn't have lagging body parts when that guy beat you with that lagging body part without answering the question, then why did he beat you? So logically, the way I see it, to knock Bumstead is to knock yourself if you're Breon. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you Team Bumstead or Team Breon? I love both of you guys, whichever guy you support. Um, you know, I'm not going to be mad if you support Breon. I'm not going to be mad if you support Bumstead. If you're a Breon fan, let me know in the comments. If you're a Bumstead fan, let me know in the comments. What do you think about these comments in the comment section below? Now, finally in the news, the final story that I want to talk about here is Big Rami. Now, Big Rami sponsors Dragon Pharma. They sent me an exclusive video of Big Rami that they thought would be good on my channel. A video of Big Rami curling with all this strip curl stuff and cheat curl news and all this hype going on around the curl. A video of Big Rami doing a barbell curl is like a wet dream on this channel. So it looks like Rami is repping out 20 kg plates here on each side, which is a pretty decent amount of weight. And he's doing it with pretty strict form. And these are, I can confirm, very recent videos. So they give you an idea of what kind of shape Rami is in right now. Now, his sponsors, Dragon Pharma, on their YouTube channel, they will be posting this full workout video this coming Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel and subscribe um, to see the full workout video that's coming on Sunday this week. So subscribe to Dragon Pharma and subscribe, mo most importantly, subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet already. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.